Hello, everybody. Come on in here and sit down now. It's Wednesday, and you you do, you you do have your study notes, right, that you've been ordering on this. Good. Get your notes out. <laughs> now, we're talking about words being spiritual containers. Monday, we read where Jesus said, my word, John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. Remember what else he said? The thief Come. comes but for to steal, to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Words can be faith-filled words that dominate the laws of sin and death. Fear-filled words. Jesus said you'll stand judgment for every idol. The, the, um, uh, the classic amplified, uh, you'll stand judged for every idle, non-working word, and it's a thing that does not proceed from faith. Right. So idle words. Now. Silly well, stuff. Huh? Just talking yeah, silly words. Well, and, well, you know, I'll see you tomorrow if a train don't kill me. Brother Hagin would say, you say something long enough for it to get down into, into your spirit or control your life. I said for years, because I was always way overweight, I hate exercise. Well, then the time came and, uh, and the Lord really got after me for that. And then I needed to get a great exercise room there and mm -hmm. right there in, in our home. And I said, when I did it, so made the decision, praise God. I got in there, had a smile on my face, brother. Yeah. And I have an, an A-frame, and on, on this end of it here, if you pull this down, there's two things like this, and you, you, you can pull them down and, and, and add weight to it from the bottom. And I caught a hold of that, and I'm smiling, and I said, God, I hate this. It was in me. And I, I just cried. I said, no. No, forgive me, Lord God, I, I love this. I physically felt that spirit leave my body. That's it. I'd said, I physically felt it. I'd said it since I was a boy. But no more. Yeah. Never say that. Right. So, <clears throat> and I want <clears throat> excuse me. Names are so important yes. that in naming a child, I learned this over the years, to be cautious about what the nickname might be. Right. And, uh, and I'll, I'm going to tell this to you. I had already spoken to the class about this earlier. Now, my grandfather... Uh, you know, Cherokee Indian, and when he grew up, he was just Chum Owens. That is it. Now, his dad, uh, he named all the girls. <laughs> but the boys, he just, they just had nicknames, and he was Chum, mm -hmm. Chum Owens. Well, he had to sign up for the draft in World War I. They said, no, can't have your nickname. What's your name? He said, W.E. Owens. No, not your initial. What's your name? William Elmer. He named himself after two men 
that he highly respected. He named himself. His brother's name was D.R. No, yeah, D.R. D.R. Owens. So they called him Doc. Mm -hmm. He wasn't more doctor. Right. He was D.R. <laughs> well, now, my mother's family. My mother, Thanetta Pearl. Then, Alton Leroy Owens. Then, Floyd Russell Owens. And then Maxine, she's the youngest. So, Alton Leroy Owens was killed in World War II, but he nicknamed everyone. Now, the youngest, Floyd Russell Owens, they lived out there on the farm. He would not wear anything but blue overalls. Now, I said that properly. In Texas, they're overhauls. Overhauls, that's right. <laughs> He'd yeah. wear blue overhauls, not striped ones. You couldn't get, no, blue. <laughs> so, His older brother called him P. T. Edelman Boy Blue. He was Pete Owens till the day he went home to be with the Lord. Everybody called him Pete. And nobody knew what his real name was. He was Uncle Pete to me. Hmm. Now, there was another man right there in that same area, in that farming area where they were raised. And he, 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 he was tall, you know, real slender kind of a guy, kind of long neck. He called him Turkey Neck Shepherd. So everybody <laughs> called him Turk Shepherd. Now, even, even the lovely man, <laughs> even, even when he went home to be with the Lord, I asked my dad, I said, do you have any idea what Turk Shepherd's real name was? He said, no, I don't have any idea. He was just always Turk Shepherd because my Uncle Bud called him that. That's something. That is amazing. And then my mother called out in Leroy, Bud is her brother. So he became Bud Owens. I called him Uncle Bud. Mm -hmm. I had Uncle Bud, Uncle Pete, and Aunt Mackie. <laughs> Names are so important. You need to watch out for the nickname. Yeah. Because it can get, it can be a, children can be stuck with it. If you listen to your children when they're really young, don't call them into their calling. Let God do that. Yeah. But if you listen to them, they'll give you clues to they what, will. what their calling is yes, they will. when they start talking about things. Um, I try to get my daughter, Madison, to play sports. <sighs> She'd be out there singing and dancing. <laughs> and the soccer ball would go right past her <laughs> <laughs> into the goal. Yeah. And I got so frustrated there one day and I said, Maddie, you've got to stop singing. And she goes, that's my destiny. That's what I'm called to do. And I went, I repent. Yeah. In other words, Daddy, get out of my way. Yeah, no, you? but, but <laughs> no, it, it, it was true. It, it, if you listen to them, you'll begin to pick up what God's already placed in them. And then you can begin to, to talk that and direct that and speak those seeds, speak to that seed of greatness that's mm -hmm. already in them. Now, one thing I never, ever did, never, I was just not disposed to do this. I never called my dad my old man. Mm -mm. Never. I didn't either. Mm -mm. Never, never, never. 
I called him my father. When I was young, I called him daddy. And before I knew you could have what you say, first airplane ride in my life. It was close enough to the end of World War II that they released general aviation. We lived there in Abilene, Texas. And a man by the name of Wooten, the Wooten Hotel, Wooten Furniture Company, had a little Lockheed 12. Mm -hmm. Now to let you know what that was, that was the airplane that Amelia Earhart flew. Little twin tail on it, two engines. So they said, that somebody, they called my dad and said, we, we're going to fly Mr. Wooten's airplane. You, would you and your son like to come out and ride? Oh, yeah. So they, he was <laughs> flying, put me up in the front seat. And this is the first time I'd ever been in the front seat of an airplane, in the cockpit of an airplane. And he looked at me and he said, don't you touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? But now the reason I'm telling this Mark 11, 20. Let's go to Mark 11. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Three times say. Mm -hmm. Say, say, say. Believe once. Say, say, say. And we got on the ground and the door stuck. So I got another 20 minutes sitting up there and it was hot. I didn't care. That's the first time I'd ever been off the ground. Walking away, saying the word daddy, brought it all back to my mind. We, we were walking across the tarmac that right there in Abilene, Texas. And I, he had me by the hand. And uh, I was between, I was almost, well, this com the coming December, I would have been nine years old. <clears throat> and it was summertime. I stopped and turned around. And I said, I turned around and I pointed at that airplane and I said, Daddy, I'm going to do that. He said, what? I said, I'm going to fly airplanes. He said, boy, you can do that. That's the first time I said it. He put his amen on it. Yes, he did. You spoke seed that was already in you. Yes. He put his amen on it as your father and that that encourages you. Instead, don't discourage your children when they say, oh, yeah. like Dr. Avery, I'm going to be a brain surgeon. Oh, nobody in our family has ever been a brain surgeon. But he is. But he is. You see what I mean? Now, an example of this and is... And I've been flying for over 60 years. There you are. And I finally realized that I was called to fly. Yes. And that got you in to Oral Roberts. Yes, it did. And it got you into That's where you're it. at today. Yes, sir. As a result, yes, sir. Words, Matthew and uh, Mark chapter five. Uh, let's look at this. Here's the we started this yesterday. And Jesus is in Capernaum, and Jairus meets him, and fell at his feet, besought him, saying, "My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her; she may be healed and shall live." Listen to what he's saying. Verse 24. Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. Now, here's, here's where I'm going to start. A certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus... She, now, she heard something first. Yes. Faith came. and Yes. And it's in her. And so that, that created a thought. And that thought caused this. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, she said based on what she heard. Mm -hmm. For she said, if I may but touch 
his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountains of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body and that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue power had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? That's a great example of words. She set the condition for what was going to happen with yeah. the words based on what she'd heard. So she's operating by something that's been sown in her. And she's saying it like you did at nine years old with that airplane. What she said contained the miracle, not what she did. That's right. Let me say that again. What she said contained the miracle, not what she did. What she said pulled the healing out of him. That's how he felt it. He recognized it. What she said pulled it out. You've probably had that where you've just been preaching along and all of a sudden you're just drawn oh, I mean, to a yes. place or to a situation. You don't even know why. You just feel a pull on mm -hmm. you, on that anointing. Now, she was afraid after it happened. This is the second or third time in 24 hours that somebody's fallen at Jesus' feet. The, the guy who they cast the demons out of, J. Iris, now her. But her thoughts created her words based on what mm -hmm. she heard. Mm -hmm. um, before I'm she said totally anything. convinced since Jesus preached what we read over there in the fourth chapter of Mark and you can prove by what Peter preached at Cornelius' house right. that he preached that everywhere that he went. Yes. That the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to uh, preach deliver uh, the recovery of sight to the blind, to preach re deliverance for the captive, to set the captive free in the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and then Peter preached that in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts at Cornelius' house, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, I am totally convinced that's what she heard. There's seven people that preach that message. Yeah. Stephen will preach that message. Peter will preach that message on one more than one occasion, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter, three, Acts chapter 10. Paul, Saul will preach that message. Priscilla, they'll all preach that message. That's a message they're all teaching because they heard him teach it. Mm -hmm. In his name. In his name and the power of his name in them they have that same anointing because they're renamed in him. So the thoughts in her created the words. Now, yeah. what was Peter's name? Cephas. Simon Barjona. Simon Barjona, Bar right. <laughs> and he changed his name. He changed his name. Simon, son of Jonah. Yeah. He changed his name. That's right. He did. John. The Baptist. Right. That wasn't his name. No, that's what he did. That's That was his assignment. That's what he preached. That's right. Yochanan the Immerser is how you would say it Yeah. for that. Now you go back and look at his, uh, and, and it, it, of course it's recorded. His dad's name is recorded. Mm -hmm. So you could go back and and see what his name is. Yes. Zacharias. So the angel said his name will be John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was named <laughs> by the angel. Jesus was named. That's right. Abraham's name has changed because he's got to get him to start saying yeah. And he Is entered this, into a blood covenant. That's with exactly him. right. And he changed his name. Proverbs 18, 14 says, the spirit of a man sustains him. Yes. And this is why you have to speak words, faithful words from your spirit, because they're containers, and because that will sustain you. She had to push through two crowds that day, the physical crowd and all the thoughts in her head. Oh, crowd. yeah. <clears throat> and you think about... <clears throat> what had to go on within her by what she heard about Jesus 
she came to the conclusion that she must forgive all mm -hmm. of those physicians. Right. And quite possibly Jay Iris, who's standing right there because she'd been put out of the, the temple. He's a ruler of the temple. Yeah. Standing right in front because of Because of an issue of blood. That's exactly right. She can't go in there. Because of what is written in Leviticus 5, that, uh, that she's unclean beyond uh, the, a, a normal blood flow. That's right. She's unclean. So she had to be isolated. That's right. That's right. And so she had to overcome all those thoughts. Let me leave you with another verse here. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. Oh, Whereas the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but waters the earth, make us it bring So forth. shall my word be. <laughs> verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing, the thing where, where I sin. Do I sin. And if you will speak his words in faith, they contain everything that's in that verse right there. <clears throat> You've heard me tell this before. Gloria and I spent the night with Oral and Evelyn Roberts <coughs> excuse me, in their home in Palm Springs. He said, uh, I want you to get up and help me with my partner letter in the morning. Well, it was almost the way you and I are sitting here. He was at his desk and his, his Bible was here. And he said, what is this? I said, it's the word of God. He said, what is this? Well, <laughs> you know, I knew I didn't know. Yeah. And he said, letters. And they're just as anointed today as they were the day they were written. Praise God. I was sitting there shaking. I know. And, I know what you mean. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he said, are you willing to commit mm. to write a letter to your partners every 30 days the rest of your life? My God. I said, yes, I am. And he said, now you listen to me. <laughs> you don't write those letters to get your needs met. You write them letters to help them get their needs met. That's your job, meet the needs of the people. Do you understand me? I said, yes, sir. And I've written one every 30 days since. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Boy, he threw that Bible. He, he just took it like, he hit me right in the chest with it. And he hollered, letter. <laughs> And we are out of time. We'll be back in a, in a few moments. Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. When God's word is in you, you can't help but have excellent results. Learn how you can produce only good things in your life with the audio teaching, Watch Your Words, Guard Your Heart, Get Results by Kenneth Copeland. He says the way to choose life is by attending to his word and speaking faith-filled words. God's word produces health, prosperity, peace, everything good you could ever need. It pleases him to see you blessed, living in the abundance Jesus paid for. What's in your heart is what you'll see in your life. Learn to guard it with the Word of God. When the Word is in you, you're able to speak it by faith. Choose to align your mouth with Him and reprogram your heart from death to life. You are a child of God, so learn to do things His way, the blessing way. God's words received into your heart and spoken out your mouth are His creative force in the earth today. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's series entitled, Watch Your Words, Guard Your Heart, Get Results. Available on MP3 disc at kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225-787-310. Free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. 
John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now in that scripture, Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, He defeated the devil, He stripped him of his power, and Jesus is now called the first begotten Son. It was God's desire through Jesus' work of redemption that many sons be brought to glory. God wanted His family. Jesus made a way for you and for me to become part of His family. Jesus has made us the righteousness of God in Christ, and now we can stand in the presence of the Most High God without any guilt or shame or condemnation. It all starts with making Jesus the Lord of your life. Pray this with me out loud. Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life and do something with it, and I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, as a born-again child of God, you have legal right to all that Jesus' name provides. You have legal right to the peace, the victory, the healing, the provision, everything. Think about it. The Most High God is your Heavenly Father, and Jesus is the King of all kings. Now, we want to help you learn more about your new life in Christ, and we have a free gift for you called the Salvation Package. It's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria, and there are also brochures to help you get started reading and studying your Bible. Just go to kcm.org to request your free copy of The Salvation Package, and we'll get that sent to you right away. When you get so excited that you're out of time and don't know it, <laughs> praise God. It's wonderful, though, is it not? It's been a good time today, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, remember these words. God loves you. We love you, and Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you called the Salvation Package. Learn about the new birth and how you can live your new life victoriously in Christ. Email us at partners at kcm.org.uk and receive your free package. Keep your heart full of God's Word and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.